And the new information out today shows the number of cancer survivors in the United States has tripled over the last 40 years. According to the American Association of Cancer Research, one in 22 Americans are a cancer survivor. The report credits some better tools to study the genetic structure of cancer cells. Let's bring in Dr. Devi Nampimparampil, who has more on this for us. Doctor, good to see you. This good to see you, too. pleasure, pleasure. This sounds like an amazing progress. Uh, what are some of the other factors attributing to the increase in survivors here? Well, I think it's very exciting news. I mean, we're learning a lot more about how cancer actually works, how it actually attacks us. So if you think about normally, you know, if you get injured, let's say that you have a cut or something else, our body is able to regenerate. So we can actually replace those damaged cells with healthy cells. Now, what happens in cancer, at least what we're understanding, is that you know, one of those cells, one of our own cells, actually basically gets damaged and goes rogue. So it basically uh, starts multiplying, not to repair a damaged cell or damaged area, but just to kind of take over. So it's actually got our own genetic material, and then it has, you know, damage, let's say, from toxins in the environment. So we're talking about, you know, smoking, right, pollution, right. a variety of things, and that's what actually causes it to become cancer. So over the past several, you know, decades, we've actually made a lot more advances in terms of understanding what causes that to happen and then addressing those factors. Well, that's really, really, really good news. But, but Dr. Debbie, look, uh, not only are more people surviving, my understanding here is that they're not in as much pain during the treatment of their particular cancer. I is that correct? Well, in general, we've got a lot of advances to be able to treat pain related to cancer, and we've also got kind of a change in the mix or composition of cancer. So in general, you know, in terms of our strategies, you know, if you think about things, there are three different areas where we can address cancer. So in terms of prevention, we can also look at, you know, once a person has developed cancer before it spreads, can we intervene? And then finally, you know, once a person has cancer and it has spread, can we do something to treat that? Right. So in terms of pain, at each of those levels, we can actually address it. But also, if you think about it, let's just say trying to prevent cancer. I mean, now people are more aware about smoking. There are a lot more smoking right. cessation campaigns. You know, there's also a lot more done with sunscreen and other preventative strategies. Strategies. So a lot of people may avoid developing cancer in the first place. And then if you think about the other things, just with colonoscopies, you know, or pap smears, people might have cancer, but it's not really dangerous at that point yet, or it might not be. So we can actually intervene to treat it. And then finally, when people have the dangerous cancers, those are the ones that are more likely to be painful, right. more likely to cause symptoms. We can address the symptoms, but we can also use these newer drugs and uh, screening technologies and stuff to try to address that. Colonoscopy, thanks for mentioning that, <laughs> must be scheduled. Um, hey, doctor, is, is there still a bit of a problem with cancer becoming uh, resistant to new treatments? Are, are researchers still somewhat playing a cat and mouse game when it comes to an actual cure? Well, to some degree. So we develop these different strategies to try to be beat the cancer, and they are successful. But the thing is, some of those cancer cells might still survive, right? Yes. So they try to adapt. They are still like human cells in some sense. So just like our cells might try to adapt to damage, they try to do the same thing and overcome it. So they do find ways to get around, let's say, chemotherapy or other things right. that we might use radiation stuff to try to treat them. But I'm still pretty optimistic. I mean, this is really a big advance over the past several decades. What? It's great to hear that, that kind of optimism coming from you, but do you think we will ever see, let's call it a proper cure for cancer? Well, we might have cures to certain cancers, but it's hard to make an across-the-board statement right. because although they do have certain things in common, they are cancers, you know, there are different factors that lead to specific cancers. So there's specific genetic damages, you know, there's specific toxins that make you more likely to develop some. There's family history that might predispose you to certain things. So I don't know that we'll have a cure for everything, but it might become more of a survivable disease, you know, like a chronic condition like heart disease. Right, right, right. Dr. Debbie, great to see you. What a pleasure. <laughs> Come on down and visit me on the set next time. I don't want you way up there in the DTL, we'll whatever do. we're calling it. All right. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.